Today we're going to be covering how you can stop, fix, and prevent orange peel. Orange peel is a problem when you're spraying paint when your finish starts to appear unsmooth and uneven and ultimately your finished result of your product will be a subpar looking finish. So if you're looking for smooth and consistent finishes when you're spraying, orange peel is one of your biggest problems that you may need to look at and figure out how to fix. So first we're going to show you how orange peel looks when you're spraying a pattern so you can notice it before it's a problem across your whole finish. Then we'll cover some practical steps of how you can prevent it and adjust to fix it when you're seeing it when you spray. The basics of what causes orange peel is that there's not enough air in the material or essentially that the particles of paint are not finely broken apart enough. And as a result, they aren't able to flow out into a smooth looking finish. So I'm using HVLP with Sherwin Williams Pro Classic. This is a common finish that's used for wood, uh, trim, and similar type work. So as you can see here, the edge of my pattern is very uneven and chunky when I'm spraying. That will turn into orange peel when I'm done spraying. I will spray this whole surface so you can see what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so if you come and look in on this closely, you can see that overall it's a little chunkier. It's not a smooth and very shiny finish. And that's essentially what orange peel will look like. You can notice orange peel before you're done spraying because at the edges of your pattern, you'll see a lot more large spots of paint rather than small broken up particles. Now that we understand what orange peel looks like, we'll give you some practical tips of how you fix it. So, as we've mentioned, the basic reason why you get orange peel is there's not enough breakup of the paint in your spray pattern. So your options to fix it include making that paint easier to be broken up, making the amount of air into the paint a higher volume and or pressure. Between the two, volume will help with HVLP and then with pressure, that's always going to help. Uh, then the other thing you can do is limit how much paint is being released into your air as you're spraying. So you're trying to put more air in a smaller amount of paint. And at its very basic level, that's the goal, is either to reduce the amount of air, paint and increase the amount of air, or make the paint easier to be broken apart. So option one is to reduce the paint or make it thinner. So you can add thinner into the paint. Now you don't want to do that excessively or you'll start getting runs in your finish. So you can start with usually 5 to 10 percent thinner and then gradually increase. If you're much more over 20 percent or so thin, you may want to start considering other options like increasing the amount of air into the paint or reducing the amount of paint that you're using in, in a given amount of air by reducing your fluid nozzle size or fluid tip. So first we'll show you thinning the paint. I've gone ahead and thinned the same material. So this is the same product, but I've gone ahead and thinned it about 10 to 15%. So even thin, I'm still getting a little bit of boulders in my spray pattern here. So I could continue to thin this material until I got a little bit easier pattern. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go to a next possible way I can make this material break up better. And that's to increase air pressure. Generally with HVLP, there's a pressure recommendation that they suggest not to go above or else you'll start getting uh, less efficiency out of the gun. So in this case, I can go up to about 24 pounds, which is about where I am. I'm still getting a little bit of orange peel at the edge of my pattern. However, you can see my overall particles are a lot smaller. Uh, depending on your goal, that might be sufficient for you. But we'll go ahead and show you a little more thinning. Um, and then the other option is continuing to e increase air. Now, obviously at this point, I'm not going to be running this gun with HVLP efficiency. But as I increase my air pressure, you can see my edge of my pattern becomes very smooth. That would be relatively close to a automobile type finish. So by increasing air, you can eventually get rid of orange peel. So 
We've increased air, we've thinned the material, that's how we've fixed it. You can also try a different type of air cap. Now obviously if you're using an HVLP turbine unit, you're going to want to consider thinning the material and then trying to increase your pressure. And if you don't find that working, you can use a smaller fluid tip for your material so that there's less material but more air in that material, which gives finer breakup. But if you have an sp air spray gun that allows you, you can try a different style air spray gun. So that's HVLP. HVLP doesn't atomize or break that material up quite as well as what we call a conventional spray gun. Downside to a conventional spray gun is that it's not as efficient as an HVLP gun, but if you're spraying thicker materials like epoxies or material like latex that's thick and you need a better atomization, then a conventional gun might be able to help quite a bit. Obviously by increasing air pressure beyond the recommendation of the air cap, that HVLP gun is working very much like a conventional gun, but we're also going to show you a conventional cap so you can see the difference that can potentially make. So conventional is a great option for easy breakup of thick material. I'm going to go ahead and cut my pressure back down to about 25 where it was, but this time I'm using a conventional cap. So I'm still getting a little bit of orange peel. So I'll go back up a little bit to about 30 pounds. And with 30 pounds, which is about 10 less than I was with my other cap, I'm getting closer to where I want to be. So as I increase the pressure, the conventional cap relative to HLP is going to give me a little bit better breakup. So the other option, as I mentioned, as long as your material would flow, is to reduce your fluid tip. But we'll go ahead and thin this material a slight bit more. I'm going to go closer to 15 to 20 percent so you can see the benefit that would make. All right, so this material is thinned closer to about 20 percent. We are using HVLP. If you're using HVLP or looking for an easy reference point for spin, spraying material easily and getting good atomization, if it runs about 20 to 30 seconds and is on two, which is a type of measurement cup that we've covered before and how to use, if you can get a cup like that and you're running at 20 to 30 seconds, it's very easy to get a smooth non-orange peel finish. But this is HVLP, thinned about 20%. So you can see with it thinned that much on the edge of my pattern, I'm getting pretty close to a automotive type finish. It's a little rougher than I would choose, uh, but the challenge is as you thin too much, you start getting into issues with running. So I've thinned it. I would consider using a little smaller tip potentially to help reduce the amount of material or changing to a, to a different style cap if I was really concerned uh, about the finish. And, and you can always do a small section to see how it looks and you may be fine that you're satisfied with how that appears. Um, this is actually turning out somewhat decent overall. If uh, the other options that you can look at, if you're using a gun that offers very low CFM or is a very low cost gun, you may find that those low CFM guns tend to not break up material as much. Uh, CFM is a lot like horsepower to a car, it's sort of the, the power that drives a spray gun's performance. So while a low CFM gun may be sufficient, if you're still finding issues, you've thinned your material, you've tried a smaller tip size, and you've considered different air caps if that's available, you may want to look at the gun and the quality of what you're using and maybe use something that offers more CFM at the air cap, which generally will be a better performing option. Uh, you can also look at other options technology wise so HVLP and air spray guns HVLP and conventional are going to give the finer finishes available and behind that would be air assist airless or airless with a fine finish tip and then at kind of the bottom of the finish quality pyramid is a standard airless uh, generally speaking so these are all the various ideas you can use to help get rid of orange peel we'll go ahead and show you one more option which is a tip size reduction so this is actually the less thin material, it's only about 5 to 10 percent thinned and I went ahead and dropped my tip size to a 1.2. Now you can also start with kind of general baselines for tips, so for stains and those sort of materials a 1.0 to a 1.2 is common. For base coats, for automotive, anywhere from a 1.6 to a 1.8. Uh, 
Uh, top coats are usually a 1.2 to 1.4 and uh, for general kind of industrial finishes, most will start at least at a 1.4, but often move up to a 1.8 or a 1.6, depending on the thickness. But I've dropped my, material, my tip on this one to a 1.2, and I'm actually using only about 20 pounds of pressure. And overall, I'm getting a little bit less orange peel uh, relative to the larger tip. So a tip reduction is another way you can kind of fix some of your orange peel problems. So as I said, when we're looking at the edge of that pattern, it's much more broken up and that's simply due to the smaller tip which produ produces less material and a little more air and that smaller amount of material gives us better breakup. So that's your fourth option. So increasing air pressure, thinning your material, reducing tip size, changing air cap, and or trying a different style gun are all options that you can consider to get rid of orange peel. Now if you're starting to experience orange peel, some of the options and you're in the middle of spraying, your choices to fix that would include wiping the surface down and starting to respray so you can address it while you're working. Or if you've noticed it too late and your finish is already done, you'll have to kind of peel that back by sanding or depending on the surface, whatever the proper cleaning method is, sometimes sandblasting and kind of start over. Ideally, you'd catch it before you're too far along by looking at your finish and your air pattern prior to moving forward. And you're looking for those very small bubbles, uh, paint bubbles at the edges. So the less boulders there are, the better off you would be. Uh, there's a link in the po comments below here that I'll post that shows you what different finish qualities look like from a spray standpoint with a photo image. And if you have other questions on orange peel, if you're thinking equipment's a part of your challenges, you can leave us a comment below or visit us online and we can help out from there. Thanks for watching.